Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I'm going to teach about teach today about something very important that is uh, relevant to F1 exam of ACCA and it is not just relevant to F1 exam rather it is very important for all the other ACC exams as well. So for the students who are going to attempt F1 exam in a short period of time after let's say 10 or 20 days this video will be very important for them this lecture is going to be very important for them so take it as a lecture that you would take normally from any any tutor okay let's move towards it this lecture is only about we are going to take a look towards the examiner's report for the FBT exam that is from September 2021 to August 2022 which is the most recent examiner report available on the ACCA website and we are going to solve the questions that the examiner has given us in this report basically in these types of reports it is available for all the ACC exams, not just FBT. It is available from, from FD towards the final professional exams. And in these reports, the examiner normally gives us the most difficult questions that were asked in this time period of September 2021 20, to August 2022. So we are going to solve those questions right now. The question number one, a very important and a very easy question. If you have done your homework, that is if you have read the book completely and if the tutor has taught you about every single aspect of the book as well. The question one is linked with uh, the chapter number seven of macroeconomics in which we used to study about a very simple concept. And the question is that, uh, let's study the question first. If we look at the question, the question one, the question states that in a national economy, an increase in expenditure will lead to a much larger final increase in the national income. Now, this concept is linked with a very small topic in chapter number seven. If I would like to show you that chapter, wait a minute. Uh, if you look at the Kaplan study text and you search multiplier. Let me show you guys. This is the concept that I'm talking about. It is within chapter number seven. Okay. But let me come back towards these, uh, this examiner report and let's solve it ourselves first. What is meant by multiplier concept? There was a writer who gave this concept to us and the name of the writer is written in the book. Obviously, no one remembers the full name of the writers. But if we take a look at just only the concept, the multiplier concept, what is meant by this? This writer told us that, for example, if today I'm, I am initially investing $1,000 and going to start a business, I will need employees. Yes, I'm going to need employees to run my business. And if I'm investing a huge amount of money, obviously I will be paying my employees a huge amount of salary as well. Let's say I'm paying my employees $500 a day. That same employee, if he's getting a huge amount of salary, he's going to go towards the shops and he's going to spend a huge amount of money as well. He will buy $100 worth of clothes and $100 worth of uh, jewelry and $100 worth of uh, eating material that he wants to eat in the next one year or in the next one day or so anything like that. But the concept is that on the other hand, what if I am investing a hundred dollars to start a business? Now my employee will be getting a, a lower salary that is $10. And the employee who will go to the shops and buy the clothes and materials and the things that he wants to eat, he will also spend lower dollars, lower money upon that expenditure as well. So what happens is that if I'm spending a huge amount of money, the employee will get more salary. The employee is going to spend more in the shops. The shopkeepers or the shop owners are going to get more income and they are also going to spend more than. But if I'm spending a less amount of initial investment and the employee is getting the less salary, the employee would go ahead and then buy less foods and less clothes to wear. And at the same time, the shopkeepers will go ahead and they also will have less income to spend for their home. So this concept is known as multiplier. The more you spend to start a business, the more you spend to start a business, the more the people at the end of this chain will have. And the less you spend at the start to start a business, the, the less the people at the end of the chain will have money. This concept is known as multiplier that you can increase the economy and increase the final expenditure of the shopkeepers and all those falling at the final chain final uh, the in the chain at the final place this final place they will have more money the more you have initial investment these people are going to have more money obviously you don't you don't give them money you don't give them anything 
in in effect you give your employee some salary and the employee went ahead and to the shops and bought something the shopkeepers also bought something from someone else all of those people are within the chain but this concept states that because you started a business with a high initial investment or you made a high initial expenditure the person you bought it from is going to spend even more the person he that person is going to uh, buy something from he will spend even more and so on and so forth this concept continues this concept is known as multiplier concept and again if we read the question in a national economy an increase in initial expenditure that you are the person who is initially investing who is initially ex, uh, ex investing the more money and higher spending this will lead to a much larger final increase in the national income that everyone will have increased income because you decided to spend more and you decided to start a business with more capital so this concept is known as multiplier concept if we go ahead now towards question number 2 let's go ahead towards question number 2 the question number 2 states that which of the following statements defines organizational culture this this question is very easy to solve i don't know why the examiner has included this question within the examiner's report but this question is very easy to solve i suppose and i think majority of the students selected option number a and the option number a states that the values norms and practices that shape society yes this is partly correct but not wholly correct because if you guys remember and if you guys have studied the book then in chapter number 3 we study that many different writers have given different types of definitions for an organization culture this definition was given by a writer not it is not the overall definition of the culture what was the definition of the overall culture the way and the accepted way the things have done are being done in the in the business the accepted way of doing the business is known as organization culture this is what we have studied in chapter number 3 and this option this correct definition is linked with the option number 4 the accepted way of behaving and working if we looked at look at option b it says the systems by which activities are directed and controlled this is linked with internal controls internal controls are the controls that direct you how activities should be done directed and controlled this is directly option number b is linked with internal controls it is not the definition of an organization culture option a is not the right option why because it was given by a writer this definition was given by a writer it is not the overall definition of the organization's culture and if we look at the option c social relationships and informal communication networks this is not the definition of organization culture this is the definition of an informal organization within chapter number 2 uh the structures of business different structures of business uh, i am talking about kaplan book kaplan study text if we come even further and look at the next example there are total of six examples in this uh, examiner's report in this question dennis is employed as the accounts manager in a company that is trading in a legitimate activity okay Dennis is employed as an accounts manager he is an employee of a company he is a employee of the company and he is an accounts manager this means that he has lots of information about the company in the accounts department in the finance department those who are doing their jobs right now many students are doing their jobs within the accounts department many students will be doing their jobs in the accounts department but everyone must know the accounts department has the most information in any department within any department in the organization okay so in a company that is trading that is trading in a legitimate activity okay the business is legal legitimate means that it is a legal business the company was established to receive funds that were acquired from illegal sources wow that is a very very technical part of the question what do we call something that if we have acquired illegal money first of all we acquired illegal money and to hide that illegal receipt or illegal cash we then first invest the first investment that we make from that illegal money what it was that known as what was that known as if you come towards uh, the notes that i give to my students look at these notes now i have always told my students that these notes that i provide you for each and every single chapter or topic these are directly linked to the mcqs because within the book with if we look at kaplan one single topic is one single topic is topic is topic is explained in so many different pages but within the notes that i have prepared for my students 
every single topic that is only relevant to the paper that is only relevant to the exam is being included all the rest of the unnecessary things are just not included within these topics so only the relevant topics are included not the irrelevant things okay so in this topic money laundering within chapter 17 notes money laundering i told you guys there are three steps in money laundering the step number one is placement the step number one relates with when you acquire the illegal cash and the first investment that you make in a legitimate business from that illegal cash it is known as placement the second or third or fourth or sixth investment that you make from the illegal cash for example if i've acquired one thousand dollars illegally from someone i have stolen it from someone and i start the first business this first step will be known as placement and in the next step if i end this business and start a new business now obviously because of the business i won't have thousand dollars i will have approximately or around about 1500 or 10000 whatever the case is but at the same time this new a cash that I will be investing in a new business. Now, this is the second step, third step, fourth step, or any different types of investment that I make. It, it is known as layering. And the final step is integration. When you have made so many investments that no one can trace the original source, original $1,000 that were occupied illegally by you. This is known as integration. And right now we are making the first investment. This company was made to make the first investment. So this was placement. All right. So if we read this, Dennis is employed by the company. He is an accounts manager as we have established and as we have studied in the accounting and different departments of a business, the chapter, we studied that financial accountants have the most knowledge in a business because they're aware of every single transaction. So obviously Dennis is aware. Dennis is fully aware that this company was started by illegal funds. So if we come back towards the notes, I have also written down that there are on, there are only two offenses in money laundering. Money laundering it is itself an offense, but there are two additional offenses that people usually do when they when we talk about money laundering. The first offense is failure to report that you are someone that you know that someone is involved in money laundering, but you do not report it to the authorities. That is one offense. And the number two offense is that you were involved in money laundering and you still did not tell the authorities about it. These are the two types of offenses. If we come back to the question, the question asks us to let us know Dennis may be guilty of which two of the following money offenses. So option A states assisting another to retain the benefit of the crime that Dennis is assisting someone else so that that person is not caught. So if we go back towards the note, we have already established that tip, uh, the failure to report that you know that someone is involved in money laundering and you know, do not report it to the authorities. Yes, Dennis is Dennis knows that the company was started by illegal sources, but still at the same time, Dennis is not uh, reporting it to the authorities. So Dennis is assisting the owner of the company to retain the benefit of the crime. Dennis is not reporting it. So the company is making lots and lots of profits at the same times by the illegal cash and the benefits of the crime are not being told to the authority and Dennis is involved in that. So Dennis is the option A is correct because Dennis is assisting someone else to retain the benefit of the crime. The option two states is acquisition, possession or use of criminal proceeds. If we look to the question very carefully and study it again, we have studied that Dennis is not the person that God that got that who acquired the initial proceeds, the criminal proceeds. Dennis is the person who knows the information. Dennis is not involved in money laundering. He just knows that the owner of the company, that the company itself is involved in money laundering. Dennis is not involved in money laundering. He only knows that the company is involved in money laundering. He did not acquire any kind of criminal proceeds. He is not in possession of any criminal proceeds. He does not, he did not use any criminal proceeds. He only knows the information. So option B is not correct. We need to realize that we have to uh, take out two correct options here that the Den that uh, for which Dennis might be guilty of. Option number C states concealing or transferring proceeds to avoid prosecution. Dennis is not avoiding any kind of information. Dennis is not concealing any kind of information because Dennis does not transfer any kind of proceeds. Dennis does not obtain again as the option B, as we have already studied, Dennis did not acquire any proceeds. How would he conceal them? Dennis is only concealing what the information that he has. Dennis is not concealing the uh, proceeds. Dennis is not transferring the proceeds. So this option is not correct. 
ऑप्शन नंबर डी स्टेट्स फेलियर टू डिस्क्लोज नॉलेज और सस्पिशन ऑफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग येस डेनस इज डेनस इज इन्वॉल्व इन इट बिकॉज डेनस नोज दैट the company is involved in money laundering the owner is involved in money laundering but danet dennis is not reporting it so option d is correct so the correct options are a and d as written by the examiner himself let's come to the next topic that is uh, example number 4 stated by the examiner this and this is linked with if you guys if i come back towards the notes it is linked with chapter number 22 and within chapter number 22 i have given a very small description and a very detailed description at the same time for training development and education what is the difference between training what is the difference between development and what is the difference between education what are the differences between each of these if we study it very accurately education is something that we initially acquire information we do not need that information but we initially learn something new and we we do not need it for example when you are studying in the first class or if i am more, more appropriate when you are a junior in your school and you study small classes what do you do you study about a b c and you study about plus and minus how do you do it will this information that you are retaining in your mind as a student as a junior student what what is going to happen when you go towards the senior classes you will use this information to develop even more concepts and when you develop even more concepts you will do bachelors or you will do professionals uh, masters or phd and you will develop even more concepts and from there onwards you will do a job so this basic information that you got as a junior when will this be actually tested in practical life it will be tested when you get a job this is known as education and another thing whenever you are having an education there is always an exam at the end now let's come towards the training in training what happens is that training when you are doing a job let's say you are doing some type of job and you need to improve your performance you are uh, doing any kind of job but you need to improve your performance at the job your manager would give you a training of some sort so that you can increase your performance right and who would this benefit is this training going to benefit you no this training is going to benefit the employee employer the one who has employed you the company that you are working because your performance with uh, will increase and at the same time you will do more things within the job and this job will improve the quality and will improve the benefits for the employer because you are doing the work in a uh, well done way in a well done fashion so training is something that is linked with the job and at the same time just as in education we used to say that whatever you learn it will be tested when you go in the practical life right it will be tested later on in future job but within training when you have learned something new in training it is automatically tested at the same time in the job for example if i was in the finance department working as a junior finance accountant and i don't know how to do debit or credit which i learned at fa1 and ma1 and fa2 and ma2 what if i don't know this i would receive a training from my manager who will tell me how to do who will train me how to do debits and credits and i'll go back and do my job so how was the training the quality of the training if you have learned something this can be assessed immediately when you go do the job Okay, this is known as training. And the, another thing in training, there there can be or cannot be an exam. It depends upon the company. And finally, what is development? Development is something where there is no exam at the end of learning something. And the person who is developing himself develops himself, learns new things, increases his ability by consciously or unconsciously. But he does his himself or herself there is no training there is no one else providing you something to do there is no one else teaching you how to do something you do it yourself whereas in training if we talked about training you had a planned and systematic approach there was a plan on how to improve your performance the manager would do that there was a system of training in the organization you can't just go ahead and train someone in a single room there is a system to do it and it would increase your performance it would change your behavior of how you do something but in development you learn something on your own will there is no one who will guide you you will learn something to for from your own the way you want to do it or something will teach you some someone will teach you but at the same time it will be related to again future just as in education but the only difference between education and development is that 
in education there is always an exam at the end whereas in development there is no exam at the end okay so let's come back do this question uh if there are four scenarios given to us and in each of these four scenarios we have to tell the examiner whether this is education training or development in the first one as a newly appointed team member team leader sanjay is attending a two day event to increase his awareness of leadership skills okay this person is going to go ahead and learn something new about Sanjay has been appointed as a leader in the team. He is doing the thing that he is going to learn something about something that he is already doing. That is, he has been appointed as a leader and he is going to take something, he is going to learn something new, a two-day event to increase his leadership skills. This is directly linked with the job that he is doing right now. He is a leader and he is going to learn leadership skills. So this is not education. This is training. In training, we learn something that is directly linked with our job. So, and this is not development. So, correct option is training. Option number two states, Tanya works abroad. She is learning the language in order to do her job better. And at the end of the program, her skills will be assessed. Her skills will be assessed by examination and certificate awarded. So, in education, what happens is that when you learn something, you get an exam. And you get a certificate at the same time that you have learned something new. And here, if we look at Tanya, she is working abroad and she is trying to learn a new language in order to do her job better. It is just that he's, she is trying to learn a new language so she can communicate better with the other people. Not that she could increase her performance in the job. So this, what is this? This is a course that she is taking that she could use to communicate better with other people at the job, not to increase her actual performance. At the same time, this will be, this will impact her in the long term because this would not increase her performance at the same time in the job. The only thing that it will do in the long term, Tanya will be able to communicate better with her seniors and better with the people who are living in that country because she is moving, she is working abroad. So this is linked with education and not training. And obviously if it is education, it is not development. There is a examination at the end and in development, there is no examination at the end. There is never an exam at the end. If we look at the next one, education, uh, the third uh, story, the third scenario, Veronica is an experienced manager. She has been selected to attend a management program at a prestigious business school. The program is open to those with high potential for career advancement and there is no examination. There is When there is no examination, it cannot be education. Yes, so this is not the correct option. Now there is a confusion whether this scenario is training or development. So, because if we learn, if we look at the scenario again, Veronica is an experienced manager. She is someone who is experienced in doing something, right? She has been a manager for a long time. And at the same time, she has been given an access to, she has been selected to attend a management program. She is not told that she must attend it. She has the will and she can decide whether she wants to attend it or not. So, it is upon her discretion. She is not forced to attend the management trainee program or any trainings. If it was a training, she would have been told that she must attend the training so that her performance could improve. At the same time, the number three thing is that, the number three important thing is that this program is going to help her career advancement and not improve her performance at job. And we have learned if there is a long-term impact of le learning something, either it can only be education or it can be development. It cannot be training. But when there is an exam at the end, it can be education. But here there is no examination and it is a long, it will have a long-term impact. So it is not education, it is development. Let's move towards the next scenario. The last scenario states, YS is a teller in a foreign exchange bureau. All right. He's a teller in a, a teller who is a teller who sits at a desk and guides the customers that comes into the, into the office in a foreign exchange bureau and is learning about new anti-money laundering legislation, which requires him to pass a multiple choice assessment. All right. So there is an exam at the end. He must pass the MCQ test. This can either be education or training, but this is not development. So there goes, we have now 50, 50 chance of getting the, uh, 
getting the options right but if we learn it more carefully why is a teller he is not someone who needs to know about anti money laundering legislation he is just a normal junior employee at the teller position why would he need a training such as anti money laundering legislation which is a very big training for someone who is very senior like if we go back towards the first mcq we learned that sanjay was a leader he is a newly appointed leader and he needed to learn leadership skills it was directly linked with his job so we told we said that it is training but if we look at why is he is not in a position where this thing the anti money laundering legislation learning this would improve his job no learning this would not improve his uh, would not improve his performance he is only a teller so this cannot be training so what is this then this is an education if you go down again towards the next part very easy part it is part e which two of the following are direct benefits of using information technology as means of improving personal effectiveness this is linked with chapter number 24 of kaplan let's go back towards the notes in chapter number 24 and here is the correct answer i have already told everyone the main benefit of using it to increase your personal effectiveness is that your routine works the things that you used to do easily the things that used to take a lot of time will be more easier to do for example if we look at email what before there were any computers before there was any it before there was any internet what used to happen if you if you wanted to communicate with someone you would send a letter it would take 2 to 3 business days to get to that person and after that 2 to 3 3 business day the person's reply would take another 2 to 3 business days to get back to you it was a long process this but this was a routine job sending someone and communicating with someone was a routine thing to do at the same time video conferencing before video conferencing you had to travel to do any kind of meetings but now you can just sit at home and do any kind of meetings just the way i am teaching you instead of going to a institute i am teaching you by the internet so this is a routine job that has become quick for me so the main advantage of using it is that it managing time effectively and efficiently and increasing your personal effectiveness at work the main advantage is that all the routine tasks that you used to do before they become really quick this is the first advantage so let's see if we have this kind of option available which two of the following option one states minimizing work routine let's leave it for now we are only looking for something that states we can do the task more quickly okay now option b states performing routine tasks more quickly yes this is the correct option because routine tasks such as using excel recording transactions uh, talking with your customers video conferencing emailing communicating with someone all this has become really quick to do because of it and this has increased our personal effectiveness now let's talk about option number c option number c states prioritizing task if we come back towards our notes and the notes that i have given to my students if we look at this thing if we look at this diagram this is the diagram that you see in chapter number 24 in kaplan and also bbp as well this is the this diagram is used this concept is used to decide which task you should do right now and which task should be delayed and done later this is the concept that is used but who is the person who decides when when to do a task for example if you ask a computer should you do the work right now should you prioritize the work right now but how to how do you prioritize something for example if i have to perform double entries if i have to record debit or credit and also create financial statements at the same time what task should be prioritized and done first the the computer can't tell you that the it systems can't tell you what task should you prioritize for example if a manager is telling you to do something if a manager is telling you that you need to go to the bank and have a meeting with them and at the same time you're doing your own task you are doing double entries recording and debiting and crediting something which task is more important the computer can't tell you that you can do it yourself and you can only do it yourself using this concept this is known as uh, if we time management technique this is the time management technique that we use according to urgency and importance you can use this concept but who does this does the it help you do this no you do it yourself prioritizing task is a something that is something that you do yourself the it system cannot help you do it so this is something that you decide this is also not the correct option this is not a benefit of the it uh, okay now is eliminating input errors a benefit of the it for example if i am playing a game 
uh, for example if i'm playing a racing game right now and i'm racing some cars what are the keys that i use in the computer i use these types of keys to turn left to turn right for example if i don't know how to use these keys to win is the game going to let me win no obviously another example for example if i'm recording something debit and credit we have learned what is we have learned in the kaplan kit and our syllabus what is accounting software for example the if within the accounting software accounting software records and creates the financial statements themselves and there are many advantages of using accounting software rather than manual accounting but if i am recording double entries debit and credit wrong wrongly for example i had to debit 1000 and credit 1000 but i am recording debit 100 and credit 100 this is the error that i am doing this is an input error that i am doing what is input error something that i am doing on my behalf i am not putting something right into the system is the it system going to tell me that no this is not correct no the it system is going to go ahead and just record it obviously it can't help me do it if we come to back towards our notes and we go a bit down towards this topic for example if i'm doing a video conferencing the it system help me do it very quickly from wherever i am present but if during the video conferences i am using wrong words to describe something can the it system help me out and tell me that i'm doing something wrong no it can't tell me that so that is an input error and input errors can only be corrected by the humans themselves and not the it so this option is not also correct but we needed to select two options we have selected that option b is the correct option let's move towards option a and test it option a says it helps minimizing routine work yes this is correct and why this is correct let's come back to the notes if we see we can now do work from home before that it was a routine for us to go to offices that traveling was a routine it has been reduced due to it because now we can use internets and computers and sit at home and still do our work before we had to record everything manually like debits and credit but now we have excel the work has been reduced at the same time before we when we talk about emailing or sending letters it was a usual task it was a lot of task but now we can set up an advance email when the uh, within our mails and an advance mail can be sent to someone at the time when it is present so all the work has also been reduced because many of the work can be done by the it systems many of the routine things can be done by the it system for example if we talk about calculations we used to do calculations uh, first of all manually plus minus uh, multiplication division and all those things we used to do it manually then we had calculators still we had to do it manually but now we just need to input two numbers in the excel uh, excel screen and it will give us an answer it has become more easy the task has been reduced it is quick but at the same time this task has been reduced so routine routine work has also been reduced it has minimized the routine work this option is also correct option 5 is also correct let's come towards the last example for this examiner's report which states which of the following actions reflect professional competence and due care in ifac iesba leave these very difficult words ifac and iesba what is this let's come towards code of ethics within code of ethics we studied there are five fundamental principles and in my notes i have told my students and in my lectures i have told my students learn about the mnemonic which is i cop square it is very helpful for your f1 exam for every single exam that you are going to attempt after f1 it is very helpful for that what did we study in i cop square these are the code of ethics or the fundamental principles i stood for integrity which stated being straightforward and honest in your professional and business relationships steed c stood for confidentiality which stated that any information that you obtain as an accountant should not be shared with anyone o stood for objectivity which stated that do not allow bias conflict of interest or any influence that your decision is influenced by someone else it should be not like that your decision should be straightforward and honest your decision should be good and finally p there are two p's because of p square the first p stood for professional behavior professional behavior and the second piece stood for professional competence and due care so if we look at the question the question ask us which of the following actions reflect oh i have missed this professional behavior what is meant by professional behavior professional behavior means that you should not do any action that would discredit your profession 
you should not do anything that as an accountant you you are seen as an as inferior because you are a member of acca you should be very focused towards your attitude and your behavior your behavior should be very good in the public at the client so the this and what is meant by professional competence and due care professional competence meant that you should first attain knowledge like you are currently studying acca you are attaining knowledge and then you should also maintain that knowledge keeping yourself up to date first you attain the knowledge then you keep yourself up to date with any changes that have been made in the things that you have learned in the past and at the same time what is meant by due care that you should do any job carefully you should only give something to do uh, like you should only employ those people on the job who are qualified and who have experience and who can do the job well because if you hire someone who cannot does do a job or who cannot do something they would not perform the job correctly they would perform errors they would make errors and frauds and errors and all those different things so you should also have due care now the question is there are three different scenarios given to us right here but so i'm sorry really sorry uh, for pausing the meeting there was a technical issue due to which i had to restart the recording so where were we we were deciding which of the following current the one two and three options fall under the definition of professional competence and due care what meant by professional competence and due care professional competence means to attain and maintain the knowledge to attain and maintain maintain the education that you get and due care means to only employ the people who are careful or if you are doing something you are doing a job do it carefully and do not do any kind of errors so this is what is meant by professional competence and due care so which of the following fall or at least meet the definition of professional competence and due care first of all the option number 1 ensuring all staff attend professional update training yes this meets the definition because we are giving knowledge to our employees and they are attaining knowledge or many of the employees might be maintaining knowledge by gaining something updated but this meets the definition of professional competence so this is the correct option option number 2 states keeping due client confidentiality when asked to reveal client information in simple words if you are uh, someone who is doing freelancing or doing maintaining accounts of some companies and if you are an auditor and you get a lot of information you are not to disclose that information and here you are not disclosing in option number 2 you're not giving out the information so you're not meeting the definition of confidentiality you're not meeting the definition of professional competence you're not gaining any kind of knowledge not even gaining or maintaining any kind of knowledge you are not doing any kind of errors or doing the job carefully you are meeting with the definition of confidentiality which stated that all the information should be kept confidential and not shared with anyone so option 2 is not correct here because we only have to under, we only have to find the correct options which meet the definition of professional competence and due care in option number 3 ensuring that only qualified staff work on the projects that whatever work that you are doing you only hire qualified staff what would this do this would reduce the errors the work would be done more carefully if we have qualified and experienced people the work would be done more carefully there will be low errors so we are meeting the definition of due care yes this is then the correct option so option number 1 and option number 3 are correct the correct option is not a it states 1 and 2 no 2 was not the correct option the correct option is option c it states 1 and 3 this is the correct option then so this is the end of uh, the examiner's report for september 2021 towards august 2022 and if you guys have any questions please do not hesitate to ask us any type of questions you can ask us contact us in the number given in the description other than that if you have any other questions do not hesitate to contact us for that as well thank you so much for watching this lecture i hope you guys learned something new and all those students who are going to give exams in the future in the near future learn something from this lecture take care have a nice day and bye bye